Slam time brings you the best of the best. It's the showdown at the stick. Steve, Troy, Ricky, Emmett, Jerry, Michael, prime time. Just doesn't get any better than this. Would the Chiefs let San Diego slip through their fingers? Or would a fumble be the means to a Chargers defeat? Could the cause help the Eagles' cause? Or would Ripon regain his Super Bowl form? Would there be more last-minute heroics from Dan Marino? The Battle of L.A. runs through the Big A. And in the Battle of the Ones, who would win number two? Fantastic finishes galore! Those games are, you said it best, prime time. <laughs> to get everybody i'm chris berman way way yeah i'm so excited i can't even speak welcome to week 11 of nfl prime time it was a week that we saw more big games including a huge one between dallas and san francisco more big games than you could shake a stick at and i'll tell you week 11 did not disappoint even in the games that weren't billed as marquee matchups with us as always tom jackson robin roberts you can help bail me out on this i will it's excitement e even in the oh by the way games oh that they were great they were fantastic <laughs> First, let's get you caught in the late games around the league. Waning moments at Candlestick Park. And the San Francisco 49ers look like they will have defeated the Dallas Cowboys. Steve Young to Brent Jones a short while ago from 13 yards out. The Niners lead the Cowboys 21-7, to just shy of the two-minute warning at Candlestick. We will keep you posted. The Jets have the ball inside the 20 at Lambeau Field. A buck 22 to go. They trail the pack by a touchdown, 17-10. to Two minutes to go, the Raiders and the Rams, that's a 20-10 Raider lead at Anaheim. Rams have the ball, is that it? The Rams have the football? We will keep you posted there. And Denver leads Seattle, 17-10 at Mile High with about two and a half to go. But the Seahawks have the ball deep in Denver territory. Again, we shall keep you posted. Of course, we have live football tonight, Sunday Night Football. The Detroit Lions, Barry Sanders, can he continue to run away from everybody in the rushing annals? And... In the Lions snap back of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who beat him earlier this year. That's our game tonight from the Silverdome. For a preview, let's go to our Mike Patrick. Mike? Thank you, Chris. The Lions are the defending NFC Central champions, but with a four and five record and two and a half games behind the Minnesota Vikings, they are thinking wild card, not championship. And tonight is a game they have to have. They'll start with a new quarterback, David Craig, for the injured Scott Mitchell. For more on that and the latest news from the field, here's Mark Malone. Well, Mike, it's not as though the Detroit Lions are happy that Scott Mitchell has broken his wrist and will be sidelined the rest of the year. But there is a belief here in Detroit that quarterback David Craig will give this team its best chance for that wild card berth. In relief of Mitchell last week, Craig not only set a new franchise record of most yards and a half, 273 and three touchdowns, but those 30-minute totals were more than Mitchell threw in any of his nine previous starts. The thing that Dave was able to do was pick up his second and third options where Scott uh, would seem to kind of freeze on one guy. And I'm not, no, that's not a, a knock against Scott because he, I thought he played well at times, real well. But Dave came in and the ball was released quicker and the second and third option uh, became uh, a, uh, a primary receiver when the first option was covered. When you bring in a veteran, 15-year veteran like uh, David Craig, I think it'll give us him a shot in the arm. I think maybe this, they'll give us a little juice to hope we get on a run here. Defensively for the Lions, they'll be without defensive tackle Mark Spindler and the left end, Robert Porsche, both deactivated because of injury. And Mel Gray, the returner extraordinaire, hadn't practiced all week because of back spasms. He worked out just minutes ago and said he'll be ready to go. That's it from the Silverdome. Back to you, Boomer. All right, Mark, thank you very much. Live Sunday Night Football from the Silverdome at the top of the hour. When we return, big games in both conferences and one that we'll be checking out soon. The battle atop the AFC West. Natron means business, but so did the Chiefs. Chiefs and Bolts, shortly. NFL Prat Time is brought to you by Logo Athletic. Get real with authentic team apparel. By Taco Bell, featuring the fully loaded seven-layer burrito. And by Beachwood Age Budweiser. It's always been true. This Bud's for you. 
while. Let's keep you updated on the late games. The Dallas Cowboys have just scored. Emmett Smith over the top. Kick good, but the 49ers recover the onside kick. So 21-14, very late. Minute 20 to go. The Niners trying to run out the clock on Dallas. Green Bay has uh, stopped the Jets. Uh, fourth and two. Incomplete. Asias into more deep inside the 10. It's now a final. The Packers have defeated the Jets at Lambeau, 17-10. Rams have just scored. Chris Miller to Todd Kinchin. Kick is good. Rams going to try an onside kick momentarily. They trail the Raiders by three. And Denver has held Seattle inside their own 20 on downs. It's now a final. Denver has defeated the Seattle Seahawks by the count of 17 to 10. Highlights of that coming up. When we return, talk about a day of teams with winning records going mano a mano. 7-2 Cleveland trying to pull their way against 7-2 Philadelphia, who came out on top at the next. They were out. At the top of the hour, Sunday Night Football, Dave Craig looking as of late, very Eric Hippel-like. Where did he shave? What, what is that? He might have. Number 17, Dave Craig, Lions, Bucks, top of the hour. Welcome back to NFL Primetime. We'd like to welcome those of you that have watched. The San Francisco 49ers beat the Dallas Cowboys at Candlestick 21-14, to leaving each team with a record of 8-2. and We'll have highlights of that later on in this edition of NFL Prime Time. Well, it certainly was a day of big games. You know one of the big games that kind of got lost in the shuffle a little bit? 7-2 and two Cleveland at 7-2 and two Philadelphia. I mean, then again, the Browns have snuck up on everybody all year. I mean, this is a team with no flash, no dash, but they hardly allow any points. That was their game plan again today at the bet in Philadelphia. That's Nick Saban, the defensive coordinator of the Cleveland Browns. They've given up 111 points by four with the fewest. Here they step on Hebron and the pass rush. Look at Michael Dean make the spin and sack Randall Cunningham in the shadow of his own goal line, Tom. Yeah, you watch him spot chat it. Look at the athleticism of Michael Dean Perry. The great spin move on Anton Davis and then the nice shoestring tackle on Randall Cunningham. So the Natalie clad Bill Belichick has a team that he likes playing the tough defense. Philly under 300 yards, 288 to be exact. Mark Rippon making his second straight start for the Browns. And here he hits Mark Carrier for the touchdown, 7-0 Cleveland in the first quarter. Bill Cosby, what? A touchdown? I said, what? Yes, that's right, Bill. 10-0 Browns in the second quarter. Leroy Horb. Boom, 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 boom. Nine yards. Innocent play, right, Tom? Wrong. Iron Evans here does a great job. He's lined up over the center. He's scraped into the outside. And right at the end of this play, he'll get caught right under Bill Romanowski. A broken fibula was the result. That's a tough loss for the Eagles. Byron been one of the spiritual players. He's gone for the year, broken, fibula, left leg surgery tomorrow. The Browns really could have made short shrift uh, in the first half of the Eagles, but uh, they missed some opportunities. One a call, uh, Reverend Jerry Austin on sportsmanlike conduct against Brian Kinchin, and uh, that cost 15 yards and pushed Cleveland out of field goal range. So it's a 10-7 game late in the first half. Ernest Viner, rumbling, bubbling, and into the end zone for Cleveland for a 16-yard touchdown, but holding Tony Jones. So instead of a touchdown, they a field goal, only 13-7 at the half. Special teams for Cleveland, so you think Eric Metcalf, but not in this particular case. Randy Baldwin takes the kickoff at his six, finds a seam, and breaks down the sidelines into Eagle territory. Finally knocked down with a kicker, 62-yard return, Murray on the play. That sets up the Cleveland kicker, Matt Smokey Stover, who had one of uh, four field goals here. This one 42 yards out, and so it's 19-7 Cleveland. Good day for Stover. And now Cleveland looking for the knockout punch. Ernest Biner pulls his way, sheds a couple of tackles, carries Eric Allen into the end zone. Bud Carson, he's the coach of the Browns, but uh, this time it was Cleveland that gave him a dose of his own medicine, i.e. outstanding defense. Hey, folks, the Cleveland Browns are 8-2 and two as they douse the Philadelphia Eagles 26-7. to seven. And we all talked, Tommy, about a 20-game winning streak for Randall Cunningham as a starter in the regular season at the vet. The last guy to beat him in the vet at all the 90 playoffs, Mark Rippon and Ernest Biner on the Redskins. So they come back and hunt it. Folks, I mean, I guess we, we ought to pay attention to these Cleveland Browns. They're for real, Tommy. Well, eight wins might get you into the playoffs, and we still have an, a, a number of games to go as, as this season goes on. The Cleveland Browns dominated the Philadelphia Eagles at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football, gave Mark Rippon the protection he had, he needed, and put up 140 yards of rushing defense. This is a team to be reckoned with. People talk about the, the, the competitiveness of the team that they played over the course of this season. The Eagles are a good football team. They beat them today in a critical situation. Yeah, I mean, the Eagles are a team to beat San Francisco by 32. And, uh, you, you know, you look at it, and Philadelphia held to just 288 yards. The tone was set in the first quarter. 101 yards for Cleveland, eight 
yeah. for Philadelphia. Cleveland, 8-2 atop that AFC Central. When we return, Chiefs, Chargers, Leslie O'Neill fighting his way to Joe Montana. Would he get there? Would the Bolts or Chiefs come out on top? Welcome back to NFL Primetime. We'd like to welcome those of you that have watched the Raiders. The Los Angeles Raiders go down the pike to Orange County and win at Anaheim against the Rams 20-17. to So the Raiders do get to that 500 mark at 5-5 five and five highlights a little bit later on in the show. Well, it's a day, Robin, of football where there are 14 teams in the NFL mm -hmm. going into the day with a winning record. Twelve of them played head-to-head. -head. So lost in the shuffle, obviously, would be... One and eight right. Houston at one and eight Cincy. I mean, the winner didn't even, the loser didn't even get the first draft pick because the expansion team's coming to next year. But you know what? They may have put on one of the best shows of the day. Yeah, as you said, this is one of these old by the way games, sporting identical one and eight records. This game kind of got lost in all the shuffle. Not much hype surrounding this game, but it turned out to be one heck of a game, especially with Jeff Blake at the controls once again for those Cincinnati Bengals. So David Klingler has a hold of the old clipboard because fan favorite, Jeff Blake. The starter. First quarter, Bengals down 10-3, but driving. Blake on third down finds Carl Pickens. A great grab, first down. Second quarter, same drive. Blake goes up top for Pickens. A 21-yard touchdown tie in the game. Blake is pretty good, TJ. Yeah, Jeff Blake in his third NFL start. He picks Carl Pickens here in double coverage, but he delivers the ball long against the double coverage where it can be caught. Pickens makes the nice grab for a touchdown. Uh, that he does after Gary Brown made it 17-10 Houston. More from Mr. Blake. He avoids the blitz long enough to complete it to Pickens at the Oilers 20, but it was costly, TJ. Yeah, Jeff was forced to show his toughness today on a couple of occasions. Here he gets tied up with Michael Barrow right there at the end of this play. Legs locked. He walked away with a turned ankle. Ouch, babe. He is tough. He stayed in there and finished the drive. The toss to Derek Finner. And he does a rest on his own, pulling his way in the end zone, tying the game once again at 17 all. Blake went to the locker room to look at that ankle in the second half. Kevin Gilbride's offense strikes first from 17 yards out. Lorenzo White turns the corner. He gets into the end zone. 24-17 Houston, but Lorenzo had some help, TJ. Yeah, as White turns the corner here, he gets a nice lead block from Ernest Gibbons from Louisville. And leads him into the end zone. <laughs> uh, the over first gets him every time. 24-17 Houston after three. Could Jeff Fisher's D stop Jeff Blake? Third play of the fourth quarter. Blake rolls out. You know who he's going for. Carl Pick is a 50-yard touchdown bomb. The flags are on the Orleans. It's 24-all, but Blake re-injured his ankle. Had to be carted off while he was out. The Oilers drove 84 yards. Billy Joe Tolliver to Webster Slaughter. 31-24, Houston back on top, but back comes Blake. His first drive back, scary moment. Steve Boussard carted off. Thankfully, it was not as serious as at first look. He is completely alert now. The outlook is very positive. Blake was focused on Carl Pickens. Look at the man, get in. His third touchdown, it's 31 all. After the Oilers punt it, less than a minute, Blake finds Pickens again. Down to the Oilers, 22. Look at the tick, tick, tick. It's two seconds left. In comes Doug Pelfrey. A 40-yarder wins it for the Bengals. 34, 31. The Bengals with their second consecutive win. The second straight week, Doug Pelfrey ends the game with a winning field goal. The second straight week, Jeff Blake has a 300-yard game. Pickens, 11 balls, 188 yards, and helping the Bengals snap their seven-game losing streak to the Oilers. Two more teams with those identical records, three and six, squared off the cards. And the G-Men, Dan Reeves Giants trying to snap a six-game losing streak. Would Kent Graham be the answer? He replaced Dave Brown his last start two years ago. Just happened to be against the Cards. Giants opening drive. Graham takes the snap. He's sacked. The ball is fumbled, heading for the end zone. A mad scramble is on. The Cards recover in the end zone. Waiting for the officials. They signal a safety. But wait a minute. They get together, have a little chat. And they say, you know, Wilbur Marshall offsides. So the Giants keep possession and move the ball, TJ. Yeah, you see Chris Callaway top of the screen coming in motion. Then he gets a good block here from Kenyon Rasheed. Makes the nice cut up inside that block for an 18-yard game. G-Men still driving. Opening drive. Graham dumps it to Dave Megan and TJ. Look at that little Megan run. Down to the nine-yard line. Graham's first completion. And oh, he's loving it. Third and goal from the four. Graham finds Aaron Pierce wide open in the end zone. 
Seven nothing Giants completing the opening 82 yard drive. What happened, TJ? Defensive backs have to be aware of the pick down in this area of the field. There you see Howard Cross, spot shadow, ties up two of the Cardinals for the touchdown to Pierce. Giants up 9 0 at the half, they're leading 9 3. The Cards mount a drive, three and a half minutes left. Steve Berline hits Randall Hill. Buddy's boys, a chance to pull it out. Third and goal from the nine. Less than two minutes to go. Burline scrambles, puts it up. You got to watch this, folks. Brian Reeves goes up, makes a tremendous oh. catch. Everybody waiting for the signal. The Giants, of course, saying no, but uh, the one that counts, the official saying yes, it's a touchdown. The Cardinals first win at Giants Stadium since 1983. The Cards snap a 10-game losing streak at Giants Stadium. The G-Men have now dropped seven straight, their longest losing streak since 1980 when they lost eight in a row. King Graham just nine of 26 for 92 yards, one touchdown, one INT. The Cards limited the G-Men to only 56 yards in the second half. Can't win that way. No, not at all. Well, at the other end of the spectrum, a game in the AFC that we did not lose track of, Rob, and that's game of top the AFC West. The game of the year in the AFC to date, 7-2. San Diego at 6-3 and three, Kansas City. A three-game stint that Kansas City have been eyeing all along, and maybe this is the chance to pick up ground and perhaps pass the lightning bolts in the standings. Because in the midst of this three-game road swing, this is game two for San Diego on the road in three in a row, and game two of three in a row at home for the Kansas City Chiefs. So here they are, just one back. Let's go to Arrowhead, see what happened. It was muddy. Remember, first year natural turf is there, so it really probably didn't soak it up as much as it normally would. Opening kickoff fumble by Andre Coleman, Joe Montana in business, but picked off by the sheriff. He did not shoot the deputy, but Stanley Richard makes the play. To take a look at what Joe Montana saw of Junior say out here at the end of this throw, right there, the athleticism of Junior getting up, actually the ball thrown right off his helmet. Junior was all over his Andre Coleman. Hey, I'm off the hook. Stan Humphreys, though, playing with that brace on the left elbow, non-throwing elbow, but still having some trouble. Had a guy wide open, Tony Martin, the first series, didn't hit him. Here he missed Martin, here he missed Dwayne Young, and even Ronnie Harmon had some trouble. Yeah, Ronnie Harmon, a great third down back, a guy you want to get out into the pattern, but when the Chiefs come with the blitz package here, he's forced to stay in and try to block Mark Collins. Junior Seau hoping his Chargers could get going on offense, not giving much up, a defense holding the Chiefs to a field goal inside the 10 early. Then Joe Montana to Lake Dawson, the rookie from Notre Dame, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, fighting, inside the five, look at it, going into the three, leading to Jack B. Kimball Anders, Jack B. Quick, he's into the end zone at Arrowhead. Marcus Allen didn't play, watched Anders run into the end zone, down to the Chiefs, late second quarter. Humphreys picked off by the former giant Mark Collins. But again, the Chargers hold him to a field goal, not a touch. But 13 nothing, all Kansas City at half, and it's raining on the Southern California guys. Gail Gilbert warming up, but he would not come in. It will be Humphreys, the man of Machis. He's kind of Joe Cap Jr., isn't he? Means trying to get it going, but Natron meant business, but so did the Chiefs defense. Stopped on third and one. Ron Dickerson, though, gets caught for interfering punter Brian Wagner. A close call. Sean Number not pleased that he's even close. And the Chargers pump fake and go for it. Sean Jefferson gets behind Collins. Sean Jefferson moving on up. It's a 52-yard touchdown, and now it's 13-7 in the third quarter. Montana, the fourth quarter. Here's what happens. Off the hands of Blake Dawson. Picked up by Darren Carrington. Carrington inside the 20, inside the 15. Makes the cut at the 10. The defense of the Chargers have been all day. That Chargers sense maybe they can come from behind. Third and goal. Humphreys to Dwayne Young. Touchdown. Lightning bolts take the lead. 14-13. Chargers on third and one late in the fourth quarter. Again, that Kansas City defense doing a great job on me. Stack him up. Joe Montana, two-minute drill, game on the line. We've seen this before. Third and ten to Jimmy Johnson. Fourth and eight. Could the Chargers hold? Are you kidding? Joe finding Derek Walker. First down on the drive is alive. Bobby Russ. Third and four, 42 seconds to go. Montana incomplete to Lake Dawson. Another fourth down play. Four and four. Montana. Ron Dickerson. Fight! Get the first number. No timeout for the Chiefs. Keep that in mind. Trying to get into Lynn Elliott's race. Third and ten. 16 seconds to go. Montana. Dean and Hughes makes a nice catch. It could be about a 48 yard field goal. Tick, 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 Four, three, can they spike it? Can they get there? Ah, there it goes, the gun is off, and the lightning bolts win at Arrowhead. This is a team that lost eight straight regular season games to the Chiefs in the 90s, but they sweep them this year. San Diego now goes to 8-2, and two, a two-game lead in the standings, but because of the sweep, really three games up on Kansas City as San Diego wins the game by the count of 14-13. to 13. Now, you cannot, Tommy, underestimate what this win means for the San Diego Chargers. Now, 13-0 on the road, crowd even the wet, really in it. But I think some of the things of why they won, 
inside the 10-yard line. They kept holding Kansas City to just field goals, just field goals, and they weren't out of it at 13 to nothing, and it gave the offense a chance. They got the one break, and they come through. So the San Diego Chargers, they, like Cleveland, are for real. Hey, by the way, <laughs> maybe Barry Switzer is right. If Blake had started all year for Cincinnati, they could be in the playoffs. They, they look great, these they, Bengals. They certainly might be challenging in the Central. You know, Jeff Blake, another 350-plus yard passing day. I think when you talk about Jeff Blake, you have to begin with his presence in the pocket. One sack today, and that's not because he's not getting pressure. He feels the rush. He's able to step up, find the opening, deliver the football, and maybe most importantly, his team plays so hard for him. Guys like Carl Pickens, Darnay Scott, invisible for most of the season. Now you can see what they're capable of behind Jeff Blake. Back to that big game in the AFC West, Tommy. Uh, boy, both defenses did a number. Means is five straight 100-yard game streak by the boards. Gain only 55 yards. Chargers, a couple of losses behind the line. Only 48 yards rushing. And the Chiefs only 84. Neither team gained 250. San Diego withstood the four first-half turnovers. They held Joe to under 200. Good defensive series for both teams. San Diego getting the break at the end and outlasting Kansas City. When we return... Dolphins depleted running game. They had some answers. They got some blocking with the Bears of other ideas. Will they kick Miami? We'll see. Another one of those games. Teams with winning records. 7-2 Miami home against 5-4 Chicago. First trip ever in the regular season at Joe Robbie Stadium. Dave wants that. Look at this. It's a fake field goal. Mark Cook snaps it. And it's Curtis come with a wide receiver, avoids Mike Williams. He's throwing to Fontenot. Mike Stewart gets his hand up, and oh, it's Keith Jennings on the fake to Conway showing good arm strength, maybe better than Steve Walsh. 7-3 to three Chicago early time. Watch. Yeah, you look at this formation, it's all left except for the snapper, the holder, and the kicker. You have Conway coming around on the reverse. Remember that the end man down at the bottom of the screen is an eligible receiver. Conway avoids the traffic, makes a throw, just kind of throwing the ball up in the air, and Jennings makes the nice grab and hustles into the end zone. Before the game, Juan said it tipped the ref, so they would be running that play. A hard reen was going to fall, babe, at halftime. So that meant the offense would fall. Marino's pass, a wobbler in the rain, intercepted by Danelle Wolford. Now watch O.J. McDuffie, 81, fall down right there. Here's Wolford trying to return it upfield for Chicago. Look at McDuffie come back, force the turnover, and in the end, it's going to be Miami ball. Just a fantastic play by O.J. McDuffie hustling. First four minutes of the second half, the teams combined for four turnovers. Miami, by the way, trailing 14-6 as we go to the fourth. But we saw it last week against the Colts. You've seen it many times. Marino picks up the charge. Marino to Irving Fryer. A slide and catch by Fryer. Fryer caught nine for a buck 12. Under six minutes to go. Oh, let me tell you about Keith Jackson. 11 yards on the goal line. Touchdown. And the Dolphins within two. 14 to 12. So, you did new math this year. You obviously go for two. And a former Dolphin just brought back this week because of all the injuries of the running back. Aaron Craver. He craves the end zone. It's a two-point conversion. Good. And Shula and Wanstatt are tied at 14. Bears go for the go-ahead field. Kevin Butler made a block, by the way, in that play with Conway. Oh, by the way, also makes a field goal, 41 yards, 17-14 Bears. So, Marino, last shot, minute to go. Marino, O.J. McDuffie across the middle. He's inside the 40 till he's tripped up into Bears territory. That sends a Pete Stojanovic from 46. The kick is, it's blocked. It's blocked. Stojanovic kick is blocked by James Williams. And the Dolphins do not pull one out of the fire this time. They fall to 11 and 2 against the NFC teams at Joe Robbie Stadium. But the Bear, another surprise: the Bears up their mark to six and four. Steve Walsh, five and zero as starter for the Chicago Bears at quarterback. The number 28 run D holding Miami to only 69 yards. Vikings and the Patriots, the way these two teams have been going, you figured a mismatch. Minnesota had won four in a row. New England lost four in a row. It set Foxborough, but Warren Moon for Jake Reed. That's pretty ball, Tom. 38 yards down to the two-yard line. From there, Terry Allen, what a great story. He is coming back this year, a two-yard run. Six touchdowns of the year, 7 nothing Vikings. They haven't lost this year when they've scored first. But how would Drew Bledsoe and the Patriots fare? They've lost four in a row. Drew's on 11 picks in those games. But for a change, most of its injured receivers are back, although it took them a while to get back. Vincent Ultimate Brisby was not ultimate on that play for Bill Parcells. 10 nothing Minnesota second quarter. Shadow was on goalpost move. Vikings. Pretty pass time to Jake Reed. 32-yard <laughs> pickup. And then Moon. You talk about pretty. The missile. Kadri Ismail. 65 yards. He could go all the way. 65-17, nothing Minnesota in a laugher. Yeah, what a pretty pattern here. You watch Myron Guyton and Ricky Reynolds at the corner. They're covering Ismail out of the slot. Look at the stop and go right there. Both players bid. He gets behind the defense for the touchdown.
It's a 20-3 lead at the half for Dennis Green. Second half. Well, that ground game in New England, forget about it. We got through Bledsoe. Let's go. Hurry up offense. Hurry up and score. Bledsoe, Ray Crittenden, 30 yards, touchdown, 20 to 10. Vikings lead down to 10. First Patriot touchdown in 11 quarters. They like the feeling so much, they tried it again. Under three minutes to go. Hurry up offense. Bledsoe. Michael Timpson. Got it. Deep. Then Bledsoe from the five. The former Steeler, Leroy Thompson. Is he open? Is he open? You betcha. Touchdown. 20 to 17. Minnesota's lead down to three. What happened, Tom? Yeah, Bledsoe here showing the pressure. He puts on the defense as he gets on the outside. Carlos Jenkins and Robert Griffin, the linebacker and the DB, commit to the run and leave Leroy Thompson over for, open for the touchdown. 2.04 to go. Third and six. Vikings, the one first down, but Maurice Hurst strips his mail of the ball and the patriots have it fourth and ten minute 51 to go Blenzo keeps the drive alive to frisbee wins ultimate 24 yards frisbee again for six yards to the 21 26 seconds to go Blenzo cricket oh we just can't make it bring on matt Barr. had an awful looking field goal earlier this one is good from 23 we go to overtime Patriots win the flip. Bledsoe immediately to the air. Crittenden, 15 yards to the 48 of New England. Then, Bledsoe will just dump it to Leroy Thompson. Turns it upfield inside the 30. Shakes a couple of tackles. Dives to the 25-yard line for 12 yards. Bledsoe, a couple plays later, to Kevin Turner. Touchdown. The Patriots win it in overtime. First win in over a month. Drew Bledsoe, 45 a record. 70 attempts a record. 426 yards, 6 of 6 on the drive, Moon 349 yards, go by the board. As the Patriots give the Vikings a taste of their own medicine. Vikings won the toss and OT against the Packers, went right down, scored a touchdown. This time, Vikings never get the ball, the Patriots win the toss, they go in and go. Tommy, hey look, Minnesota 7-3, and three. you're going to lose every now and then, especially on the road, but... Sometimes they just shut down, and this time it caught up to them. Well, we saw it against the Dolphins playing in, in Minneapolis, a 28-0 lead in the first half. The Dolphins come back, although the Vikings win that. They have to be into the game all the time. You get the feeling that sometimes they relax when they get a lead. That's what happened to them today. Inside the numbers we go for record time from Drew Bledsoe. We told you both the completions and the attempts were new NFL records. The 45 completions sets a new mark break in the old mark in a game I actually was at with my dad. 42 completions by Richard Todd for the Jets in a losing cause at Shea Stadium against San Francisco in 1980. Oh, by the way, some guy named Sims had a good game once for the Giants. Meanwhile, attempts. Bledsoe knocks George Blanda of the 64 Houston Oilers out of the record book. Interesting to note that fourth on the list, Gannon for Minnesota. Another Minnesota-New England game. Boy, they always throw the ball a lot. So much that Drew Bledsoe did today, the band ran out. When we return, we've got more highlights. Late game from Lambeau. Boomer and the Jets trying to scale the pack. We'll be back. We've seen some great football. Hey, the Bucs are on tap at the top of the hour. Buccaneers and Craig Erickson at Detroit at the Silverdome. Mike, Joe, Mark on the call. Don't go away. walk on the wild side it is in week 11. Now again, the Falcons Saints, maybe on paper to a lot of the country, Robin, a game that, that goes by the boards, but a great robbery in the South. I know yeah. you're saying, hold those grits and hold that jambalaya. This is big down there. What's yeah, a great you, game. Yeah, you're right, Shia. A little boudin in them with hot that, boudin. okay? The Falcons and Saints, you know what you're talking about. One of the most hotly contested <laughs> rivalries in the league, and usually the hometown fans go home bumming. The road team has really come up big in this series in recent years. And June Jones hoping for the same today down in that there Superdome in New Orleans. And his defense getting it going early. His defense trying to get to Jim Everett. He's been hot for the Saints and the Falcons secondary getting it done. Roger Harper picks off Everett on the tip pass. What happened, T.J.? Yeah, the ball thrown a little bit short right there. You see D.J. Johnson tip it. And then right there, Roger Harper, nice and focused in on the ball, begins the return game. Yeah, that led to a Falcon touchdown. Jeff George to Andre Risen, 10 nothing Falcons. And on the ensuing kickoff, Tyus gets the ball knocked from him. Eric Jack picks it up, rumbles 27 yards with a touchdown. 7 nothing Falcons. The Saints turnovers costly. The Falcons with 20 points off turnovers today. Then George takes over. Finding Terrence Mathis, a 39-yard gain, setting up a Norm Johnson field goal, 23-10 Falcons on top at the half. You see those big numbers for Mathis. 
It's Jeff George's turn to watch now. In the second half, Mario Bates missed six weeks with a broken jaw. Looks fine here, running left for nine yards, setting up his first NFL touchdown from nine yards out, cutting the Falcons' lead to just six. And Mario Bates can get it done out of the backfield, picking up big yardage for the Saints. On the ground, Bates, the big run. He could do no wrong today, TJ. Yeah, you watch here the good blocks from William Rope and Lorenzo Neal right there. The good kick out block by Rope. Yeah. Opens up a nice scene for him to go through and get some big yardage. And with that kind of running, Jim Everett knows what to do. He gives it to Bates. Bates left, goes right up the middle, gets it for the touchdown. Saints take the lead 24 23. 22 carries, 141 yards, and two touchdowns for that young man. And the fourth, Everett goes to the air. Wesley Walls, Saints up. The failed two point conversion is 30 29 Saints. Jeff George isn't finished yet. 2.13 left. Finds Andre Risen. A big 30 yard gain. That sets up Norm Johnson, a 34 yard field goal. He sets a franchise record, a perfect 6 for 6, 32-30. Falcons don't know with the Saints was another heartbreaker. Everett, under two minutes to go, to Quinn Early. Then, Everett, torn small. 28 seconds left. He finds Early again, allowing this man, the great day, Morton Anderson. 13 seconds left. Oh, he knows it's in. From 39 yards out, the Saints win it, 33 to 32, Mario Bates, the best day of his young career. The first Saint in 17 games to rush for over 100 yards. Jeff George over 300 yards passing. Andre Risen shut out last week against the Chargers, caught eight balls for 118 yards and a touchdown. But another solid day for Everett, 28 of 36 for 276 and two touchdowns. For the second time in six weeks, the Seahawks and Broncos go at it at mile high, Tommy. John Elway has seen touchdowns, seven touchdowns, with only one INT in the last four games. But first quarter, no score. Elway picked off by Terry Wooden, and he returns it to the Denver 17-yard line. Those costly turnovers. Could Seattle take advantage? Third down. Rick Meyer looking, looking, incomplete to Kelvin Martin. Seattle blew a field goal attempt on the next play. Meyer 1 of 11 in the first half. Second quarter, Denver ball to Tracy Johnson fumble. John Elway, remember, he was the only one to score in the first meeting this year. A touchdown. Broncos up 7-0. Pretty good, TJ. Yeah, John has had some miscues throwing the ball this year, but not running the football. Has a great feel for the pocket. There runs up right in the middle of the pocket, sees a lane to the outside, and then look at the effort at the end of the run, willing to take a lick to get the ball in the end zone. <laughs> he always is. Fourth quarter, 10-3 Denver. Big scare for Derek Russell. He hurts his neck trying to tackle Orlando Waters on this Elway interception. He's carted off the field. After the INT, Seattle ball. Chris Warren, 23 yards, and more importantly, the touchdown. Warren, 18 carries, 122 yards on the day. Game tied at 10. Denver ball, 5.43 left. Leonard Russell scores from 11 yards out. Denver holds on to win it by a score of 17 to 10. The Seahawks have lost six straight at mile high. Russell, 109 yards on 19 carries. Rick Meyer, 10 of 29 for 133 again. 17 10. The Broncos now at 4 and 6. Rob, the Bronx have the next two games at Mile High. They're hoping to get in at 2-5-4 and four teams. The Jets and the Packers are Lambo Field. But the Jets have not been since 1979. Opening drive, Brett Favre, Packers hot. Favre to Robert Brooks, 15 yards under the 13. Then Favre, Brooks, he liked it so much, he is it again in the end zone. 7 nothing. Ah! Second quarter, the Jets come back. Richie Anderson, good sweep block and good cut up field, goes all the way. He cut. Go all the way. Makes a cut on George Ice Teague. He's finally run down at the three yard line, setting up a field goal. Tom, what happened? Yeah, you watch the Packers here. Leroy Butler has a shot right there. Goes low. What a great job, though, of Richie Anderson getting up over the tackler and turning that into a big play. This week in New York, Boomer Esiason came to the defense of his uh, tight end, Johnny's Mitchell. He threw to him for 20 yards. Only his seventh catch his last four games. And Boomer doing it personally. Say, hey, get in the action, big guy. Then Boomer. So a guy that's had a heck of a season with and without the cast. That's Rob Moore. End zone beats everyone to the flag. J-E-T. They lead 14 to 10. Third quarter. Favre looking for Terry Mickens. It's incomplete with pass interference. And Anthony Pryor gets it back in business. Yeah, we take another look at this play right here. Now, Anthony Pryor doesn't turn around. But that's a close call right there. Looks like he timed that play perfectly. That well, set up the Packers on the call. 
far. Not the names you would think. There's Sterling Sharp. No, the former bear, Anthony Morgan. Nice pass between defenders. Pass leads 17 to 14. But the Packers lose Sharp with a hamstring injury. Why you're seeing some of the other guys. Fourth quarter, Pack lead 17-10. Jets driving for the equalizer. Boomer Esiason starts it out to Johnny Mitchell. Makes a catch for 18. Boomer to Ottawa from White Plains, New York for 13 yards. Then fourth and two in the Green Bay 19. Esiason completes to Mitchell for first down. Under a minute to go now. Third and 10 for the Jets. Boomer. Monk to the eighth. Fourth and two for the Jets again. They need the touch. Boomer for more. He slips, almost makes the circus catch. It's incomplete. So the Jets playing very well, very good defensive football, but it's the Packers that win at Lambeau before they set off on a murderous three-game road trip that starts at Buffalo, then four days later at Dallas. So an important whip of Pack. At the 6-4, and four, they beat the Jets 17-10. to 10. The Rams hosting the Raiders in the first non-blackout game at Anaheim in two years. Magic, Chuck Knox, everybody there. I mean, you couldn't get a ticket to this thing. Chris Chandler, they call him Flipper, Flipper for 49 yards. Same drive, Chandler. They still call him Flipper. 22 yards, ties the game at seven, but they beat three Raiders. Yeah, you watch the Raiders' safety here. Eddie Anderson, you see the Raiders there right in that triangle. Eddie makes the wrong choice right there. Ball right behind him to Flipper Anderson for the touchdown. Off the shell, looking on with the score 7-7. Haas to James Jett. Jett, one of the burners, but he hadn't caught a lot of the over 30-yard varieties until right here. 31 yards, his first catch over 30 this season. See, we don't lie. Same drive. Haas to another one of his many burners. Rocket Ishmael. 10 yards, 14-7, the silver and black. Second quarter, tough break for the Rams. Chandler playing so very well is injured, left the game with a sprained ankle. He would not return, so it's Miller time. Chris Miller comes in. Third quarter, as, Mil as uh, Chandler carted off, fourth and goal for the Raiders, 14-7. Harvey airborne into the end zone, but he's met by Shane Conlon, no touchdown. Yeah, Shane Conlon with the great read right here. The defensive line pinning the offensive line down. He goes right up over the top with Harvey Williams and brings him down. So the former Bill, the former Penn Stater making the big play mid-fourth quarter. Jeff Hostel is sued for non-support because Gerald Robinson makes the sack. Injured his ankle and the Haas would not return. Right now, X-rays on his left foot. Don't have the result right now. Hopefully he's okay. Fourth quarter, 17-10 the Raiders. Just under four minutes to go. Miller picked off by Terry McDaniel. Oh, those Raider corners are so good. McDaniel's sixth pick of the year. Makes it to 20 to 10. Rams score a late touchdown on a pass from Miller to Kitchen, but the Raiders get the onside kick and they win it by the kind of 20 to 17. We talked about uh, gave the, the fact that the Raiders could do a good job and run defense. They held Jerome Bettis to 10 carries for 13 yards. When we return, have we forgotten something? I think we have. Niners and Cowboys. How could we wait this long? We're just starting up the band. Come on back, y'all here. At the top of the hour, Barry Sanders, the mercurial one. Lions, Bucks, 8 Eastern, 5 of the West Coast, 3 in Hawaii, 2 in parts of Alaska. Oh, we are global, aren't we here at ESPN? The game of the year looked this way in the summer. It looked this way in week 11. The team of the 90s, the Dallas Cowboys at 8-1, and one, going out to San Francisco to play the team of the 80s at 7-2. and two. A fantastic game at the stick. Question to be answered between sips of Chardonnay today at the stick. Has the gap been closed by the 49ers or have the Cowboys widened it? Here we go. Big game atmosphere at Candlestick. Yeah, well, they're so excited that we don't know where everyone is. Troy Aikman, Steve Young, Michael Irvin, Deion Sanders, and the teams were fired up. Was Troy Aikman's thumb hurt in practice? Was that going to be bothering him? That another question, a subplot. First quarter, game scoreless. Aikman is... Uh, Gonna throw it. Here we go. Warm up the music, and Deion Sanders is warmed up. Makes the pick. But as we watch it, Tommy hurt his finger. It looks like the middle finger. Yeah, Deion Sanders right there comes down, and luckily he tripped because we know what the end result of that would have been. A dislocated finger is what it looked like. He didn't want anybody to touch it before he left the football field. Went to the locker for much of the first half. So with Deion out, Aikman to Alvin Harper. He has just murdered 
the 49ers in the last two championship games. They're like going to go. Eric Davis and Alvin Harper in the foot race. Dive, Eric. Dive, Eric. Dive, Eric. Dive, Eric. Harper tries. He doesn't quite get in the end zone. He's knocked out at the four. Tom, what happened? Yeah, with Deion Sanders out of the game, the end will end up here with Harper. Eric Davis in a foot race. Timmy McDonald can't help from the safety spot. Doesn't have enough speed. But yes, Davis at some point has to make a commitment and go on and dive for the man. Well, that sets up Emmett Smith. The pinch, the blocking, and the Cowboys have the lead. They're so good early. The Niners wanted to get a lead. They only led once in either of the two NFC Championship games. That was 7-3 to in 92. Steve Young, though, the fake and the naked reverse. The bootleg and 15 yards and a late hit on Charles in charge for 15 more. Yeah, Steve Young with the outstanding play fake right there. Charles Haley fooled for just a second. He turns. He's a relentless pursuer. And you see Steve Young right there go down in the slide. And Charles didn't hit him as hard as he could have. Well, Young sneaks in for the touchdown to tie the game at seven. His teammates, like Ricky Waters, fired up. Young rushing in the first half, 55. He threw for only 16. So Steve doing it on the ground. Barry Switzer's team in a defensive dogfight. A lot of people felt this would be high scoring. Not the case. Second half of the score tied at seven. Young, I think we need to go to Jerry Rice. So he throws long for Rice against number 24, Larry Brown. He makes the catch, turns on Brown, and he's gone. It's a touchdown. 14 to 7, just 67 shy of that 200 mark of Jerry Rice. That's on 133, and the 49ers have a rare lead over the Cowboys. So, who's their big play? It's Harper, and it's a long pass to Harper over the shoulder with Eric Davis with a good coverage, but it's down to the 20. Second a goal, Aikman. To Merton Hanks, who was enormous in this game. Number 36 nets it out of the end zone, and the 49ers defense has held. This is an outstanding job of a safety reading the eyes of the quarterback. You can see him focused in on Troy Aikman, following him right to the football. Troy never saw him as he got the INT. And Dion says, Merton, I moved you out of the corner spot so you could play free safety. You played great. Young. The JT John Taylor, two weeks ago, arthroscopic surgery. 33 yards before he tight ropes, finally goes out of bounds. Sets up Young bootleg. He's going to throw on the run to tight end Brent Jones. Touchdown, 21-7. to San Francisco in the fourth quarter. Ricky Waters, Steve Young, Brent Jones, running around the end zone, but never count the Cowboys out. Less than two minutes to go. Dallas feels they can make up two touchdowns. Young almost get more hurt by Ricky there. Dead. Aikman, the screen to Emmett Smith. And look at the blocking, and look at Emmett just churn up and knocked out at the two-yard line. Next play. Emmett, over the top for a second touchdown of the afternoon, 21 to 14. You know what's coming. Joe Avizano, the special teams coach. Everyone in the park knows. Onside kick. A interesting lineup. But Ed McCaffrey played his college ball just down the street at Stanford. Falls on it for the Niners. Charles Haley, Ken Norton. They've switched teams over the years. This time, Norton. Well, Norton never lost any of these matchups because he was on the Cowboys when they beat the 49ers three in a row. Now he's on that is when they beat the Cowboys. Charles loses to his ex-mates for the first time, 21-14. San Francisco over Dallas. Now it's not the playoffs. There's a lot of monkeys and gorillas on Steve Young's back. But as he talked to Leslie Visser, maybe a little bit, maybe one orangutan fell off. Thanks, Chris. Well, it would appear that the team of the 80s is back, and this is one of the men responsible. Congratulations, Steve Young. Tremendous effort. What was key today? I mean, they were all over us early in the game. We didn't hardly get a... I think we had zero yards passing at a halftime, so the defense kept us in the game the whole way. Big interceptions down to the goal line. And then when it counted, guys made great plays. JT made a great play. Jerry Rice with a jump... It was just, you know, guys just hung in there, and, you know, that's the way you're going to beat Dallas is just hanging in there. What did you think you saw? A lot of bootlegs, a lot of running by you the first half, then finally yeah. Jerry Rice in the second. Well, we couldn't hardly drop back and get a playoff uh, early in the game. I mean, they were just swarming. The four-man rush, Charles Haley, Tom Tolbert, guys like that were just killing us. So uh, we just went to other things, you know, a little keep, a little this, a little that, put seven points on the board, and the defense kept us in the game. You seem very emotional at the end of the game. You were imploring the crowd right now. They're all cheering for you. What did this mean to you? Well, we've been beat by these guys three times, and they've been...